describe the photoelectric effect? Prove the quantum nature of light. Won Einstein a Nobel Prize. Spawned a whole new field of physics. Revolutionized the way we view the entire physical world. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Hey guys, Jade here. So, the photoelectric effect. The effect that proved that light was made of particles. So you're thinking, what do you mean light is made of particles? I mean, it doesn't look like a particle. But more importantly, in 1801, Thomas Young proved that light was a wave. He had light doing all sorts of wave-like behavior. Wave interference, wave diffraction, there was an interference pattern. All the evidence pointed to light being a wave and not a particle. It even proved super genius Isaac Newton wrong. So now let's take a look at the experiment that proved the quantum nature of light. Or that light is a particle. Either way. So we've got a metal plate which we're going to call the emitter. You'll see why in a sec. The emitter plate is connected to the negative terminal of a battery, making the emitter plate negatively charged. Now we place another metal plate opposite the emitter, which we're going to call the collector. The collector is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, making it positively charged. Now, the electrons in the emitter want desperately to jump across to the collector. Opposite charges attract, so the negatively charged electrons want to get to the positively charged collector. But there's a catch. This setup is placed inside a vacuum. Nothing's going anywhere. The electrons are stuck to their metal plate. No one can move. Of course, if the electrons were to somehow break free of their metal prison, they would jump the gap no problem. But first, they need to be given enough energy. This is where our light source comes in. A light is shone onto the emitter plate freeing the trapped electrons. The energy carried in the light is transferred to the electrons giving them the energy they need to jump off the emitter toward the collector. We can measure how many electrons are jumping off the emitter and onto the collector by placing an ammeter in the circuit. The flow of electrons produces a current, which is recorded by the ammeter. The bigger the current, the more electrons jumping off. So before we reveal the experimental results, Let's take a look at what classical physics, or Young's theory that light is a wave, predicts should happen. If light were a wave, the amount of electrons jumping off the emitter should depend on the intensity of the light. Light of higher intensity means a wave of bigger amplitude, which means a wave carrying more energy. So a higher intensity should produce a larger current. So if we turn up the intensity, Regardless of the frequency of the light, the electron should be given enough energy to break free. Also, if light were a wave, this energy transfer should be somewhat gradual, so there should be a time delay between when the light hits the electron and when the electron is ejected, especially at low frequencies. Another thing that should happen is that as the wave amplitude increases, more energy is being carried in these waves, so the electron should have more kinetic energy as they jump off the emitter. This means that as the intensity of the light increases, the electron should travel with a higher speed toward the collector. Yeah, none of that happened. Sorry, Young. It was observed that as soon as the light hit the metal, the electrons jumped off the emitter instantaneously. There was no gradual buildup of energy. It was like the electrons were getting knocked off the surface. But the most mind-boggling observation was that the kinetic energy of the electrons was found to depend on the frequency of the light, not the intensity. In fact, for some frequencies, no electrons jumped off the metal at all. The only way to explain this behavior is that light is made of particles. It's like if an electron were this melon, and different frequencies of light with this delicious assortment of organic produce. There is simply not enough energy in this cherry tomato to knock the melon off the table. You can turn up the intensity as much as you like, but no matter how many cherry tomatoes you throw, that melon is not going to budge. What about a clementine? Still no. Now let's try 
the lemon. Yes! Looks like there was enough energy in this lemon to knock the melon off the edge. This is what's called the threshold frequency, the minimum frequency needed to knock the electrons off the surface. All frequencies above the threshold frequency carry enough energy to knock the electrons off the surface, but all frequencies below the threshold frequency, well, they just can't get the electrons to budge. The kinetic energy of the electrons was dependent on the frequency of the light, not the intensity. The higher the frequency, the more kinetic energy. It didn't matter if the light was barely a glow or so bright it's blinding. The kinetic energy changed only with the frequency. From this, Einstein concluded that the energy carried in one of these light particles, which he called photons, was also proportional to the frequency of the light. More energy in a single photon meant more energy being transferred to an electron. The one thing that did depend on the intensity was the electron current. If the light shone was above the threshold frequency, a higher intensity caused a larger current to flow. And this makes sense. I mean, a larger intensity means more photons. More photons means more photon-electron interactions, which means more emitted electrons. Einstein's discovery of photons won him the Nobel Prize and kind of revolutionized physics. Oh, okay, so you're saying light was a particle, Einstein was right, Young was wrong. Light is a way. Pfft, what a stupid idea. Well, actually, it turns out they were both right. Light is a particle and a wave. Welcome to quantum physics. Light sometimes acts like a particle and sometimes acts like a wave. This phenomena is widely accepted among physicists and it's even given its own fancy name. Wave-particle duality. But it doesn't just stop at light. In the quantum world, particles and waves are doing this all the time. An electron can have a wavelength and frequency, and a wave can collapse into a point like a particle. Don't get it? Don't worry. As brilliant physicist Richard Feynman once said, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum physics. And he won the Nobel Prize in quantum physics. That's it guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Over here is my last video, The Proof That Light Is A Wave. It's kind of like part one to this video. So make sure you watch that to get the whole picture. Click the links to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and don't forget to subscribe so we can keep learning about our world together. I need a better catchphrase.